Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and this time around we're starting a brand new review series. We are going to be reviewing the, the brand new Radio Master Boxer Crush transmitter. And right now I know very little about this transmitter, so I'm going to be working it out along with you. So this initial video is going to be the unboxing and my initial thoughts. The next time around we're going to set up and get it flying so I can give you my opinion when we're down the flying field. And stick around because there's going to be a chance for you to win this very transmitter. So make sure you like and subscribe. Right, so let me tell you a little bit about this transmitter. So this transmitter is actually available in seven different colours and they are iron grey, frost white, mint mist, hot pink, cherry red, iceberg blue, and lemon twist yellow. So some funky names there for sure. And it has the same specs as their Boxer ELRS and the AG01 combined, which means it, which means it does come equipped with their famous AG01 Hall effect gimbals, which I'll be interested to try those out. So I'll include more specs and full details down below in the description, including the links to all the different Radio Master social media accounts. So let's get on and actually get it unboxed. I'm intrigued. I do like opening up a new transmitter. I've done quite a few recently. So, start off with the box. Compact design, specifications on the back. So it runs the Edge TX operating system, which I've heard a lot about, but I've never used. It's pre-installed with Edge TX. Cutting edge soft software on leading hardware. And apparently Radio Master works closely with Edge TX as well, which is always good. You know, you want your manufacturer or the hardware working with the software provider if they are a different software provider. In this, this case, they are. There's basically lots of other specs on the box. But let's have a quick look at the weight because I think that's quite important. So the weight is 532 grams or 532 and a half. Size 235 by 178 by 77 millimeters. Information about protocols there. So internal RF options are CC2500. Multiple protocol, 4 in 1 multiple protocol, ELRS 2.4 gigahertz. And it's module dependent. Okay, so maximum 16 channels, which is receiver dependent. Battery 7.4 volt, 2 cell LiPo. And the gimbal is a high precision 4.0 Hall gimbals as standard. And the upgrade software you can do via USB, SD card, and Edge TX companion PC software. Okay, so we'll be looking at that as well. Perhaps I'll do a separate video about how to get this upgraded to the latest version. But for now, I really want to just open this box up and see what they've sent me. Oh, that's nice. I didn't know that. Comes with a case. I do like a transmitter that comes with a case. And what else do we have in the box? We have some funky stickers. Some graphics there to put on your plane and a quick start guide. Now I'm guessing like always, it's probably a full PDF you can download from their website where you can get the full instruction manual, but this is a quick start guide. So this is one that we'll be using when we come to set this up on a model next time around. So here's the case. So it's a cloth case, but it's a hard case. So a cloth skin, material skin, Kind of is what it is, but it looks nice. I like it coming with a case. And guys, I recommend you keep your transmitters in a case, no matter what they retail out. And just talking of which, this one retails out about $189. So around about 145 pounds, um, depending on where you're located. So that's a good price. Let's see what you get for that money. Aha. Uh -huh. First look, so you can see already, make sure I don't drop it, screen protector on at the moment and some gimbal protectors as well that they've shipped with, protecting the switches here and the dials, strap and then a pouch at the top. Let's open the pouch up. Nice. Okay, so we've got a, um, a QA, quality assurance pass number there. A little tiny key ring, which I'm very tempted to keep. But now I said you guys will have a chance to win this transmitter and that will include 
the keyring, but I like that. I like this nice little touch. And then we've got a USB cable. So it looks like they've opted to just provide a USB cable. This will be for charging, and you have to use your own uh, plug adapter for this cable to plug into mains. That's fair enough. A lot of manufacturers are now doing that. Not, they're not giving you a full charger. They're just charging off a USB, like many, many devices do now. And then you have to put your own plug adapter in there. Your own plug adapter like this one, which is simple, depending on where you are in the world, what connections are, just for USB. But let's carry on. Let's get this open. Now I did, must admit, I did ask for blue. They kindly approached me and asked me to do a review for them. So this, I guess this isn't sponsored other than they approached me, Radio Masters this is, asked me to do a review and I said, sure, as long as it can be unbiased. Otherwise there's no point is there. So that's the terms we've done it on. I didn't get paid to do this, but they have provided a free transmitter. So let's have a look. Material strap along the back. It's like a modular thing you can plug in there. Bear in mind, I've not looked at any instructions. On the top, show you a bit closer. We've got an SE button, toggle button, DSC point, USB point, obviously your antenna in the middle, headphone jack, and an SF button as well. It's different. Let's take this off. Just currently protecting the switches and the dials. I've not seen before, but I know some people do 3D print gimbal protectors. I like that. Oh, that's very smooth. I like this styling around here. Again, it's just different. I've not seen that before. Small thing. I know on some of my other transmitters, these markings are printed on and they do actually rub off, but these are actually etched on on this transmitter. So we have digital trims, what looks of it. T1 to four, number of buttons, one to six across here, a wheel which clicks in, an MDL button, SYS, which I'm assuming system and model, return, page, page, and tell, T-L-E, probably can't quite see that. There we go. And it's the cover on the screen, which I will have the honor of pulling off. And I'll save that so I can put that back on for the person who ends up with this transmitter. So initially, it's, it's very different. It's very different to what I'm used to holding or flying with. I do like that very smooth throttle. And I like the chunky, chunky grippy sticks. See, they've got spikes all around them and the spikes on top. So I like that. Now the color, I guess it's the first time I've held a color transmitter. And to be really honest with you, which I promised I would do, when I first opened it up, I thought, oh, it looks like a toy. And that's just because it's in a different color. Now I know a number of manufacturers now are starting to provide um, products, transmitters in different colors. I mean, look what's happened to the phone industry, the mobile industry, get lots of different colors of phones now. And I guess it's just obvious that Radio Master are following along the pattern. Now this might be to encourage the younger generation into flying. Something different, something vibrant, but it might be for that, um, which I'm all for. I'm all for about that. Let's encourage as many people as we can into the hobby, into any radio control hobby. But for me, when I first looked at that, it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to, to be honest with you. But let's move on. Feel, again, I fly planes, so I fly with a strap. I hold it about here. I haven't got my, my neck strap on at the moment. I should probably go and get one. Those buttons at the back, which again are different. I can get too easy. That's exactly where I rest my fingers. So that works for me. That's how I hold the transmitter, even with when I'm using the strap. And I do like this. I, actually, the gimbals do feel good. I know they've made a point of it in their marketing, but the gimbals do feel good. And for me, I know you can adjust stick tension but for, for me, right now, I can feel the center point when I move back, which is what, I'm, which is what I want, and they feel nice. And the throttle, you know, the ratchet's off at the moment. I'm presuming it has got a ratchet, but it's smooth and it just feels good. I 
Okay, dials at the top, let's fill the switches. Two-way switches, SD, SC. SB, three-way switch. SA, two-way switch. So it looks like one three-way switch. Which is interesting. Let's open up the back and have a look inside before we go ahead and turn it on. So this is like a modular system. So yes it is, it's like you can buy other modules. So I'll do a bit of research on that and find out what you can plug in. Please install antenna before powering on radio. Well, okay. I'm guessing that's the antenna. There's the antenna. Again, it's kind of like a T-bar antenna which is different which unscrews trust me to start taking things apart as does it come with a battery no it doesn't okay now that's kind of typical on the I'm gonna call it, say lower end because it is a lower end transmitter just for the retail price you know 190 odd dollars compared to transmitters where you can pay three thousand dollars for doesn't come with a battery NICAD, but it does support a NICAD. Instead, they've opted for a module where you can install a couple of random size batteries, 3.7 volts or UM18650 times two, size 18650. So I don't currently have any of them, which is rather annoying, but I might have a LiPo that fits in there. Warning, charge two times 3.7, Lion or 2S 7.4 volt LiPo only. Do not charge 6.6 V Life or 3.6 Lion cells. Okay, fair enough. And then there's memory card. So it comes with a memory card. I guess that's probably where the software is installed to. I'm not sure. It might be, might not be. Okay, so I decided to read the instructions, which is actually the sticker at the top. It's a bit dark in here today, isn't it? Which says press down and slide and that's how you get the memory card out press down and slide and then that little catch comes off and the memory card comes out now that's fiddly to be honest with you um, but it really depends on how many times you have to take this memory card out as to whether it's an issue or not so this is a 512 megabyte card i'm presuming you don't need to take it out to upgrade the software but let's find out when we get that far so i just put that back in flick that back shut press down slide back and it's back in place okay i've done some research yes i've actually read the manual batteries and charging boxer has a built-in usb-c charging function for the 3.7 volt lithium batteries the charging circuit is only designed to charge two 3.7 volt lion 18650 or two times 3.7 volt li poly batteries 2S 7.4 volt LiPo battery pack. The nominal battery voltage is 3.7. The charge voltage is 4.2 volts per cell, which means I can just chuck a LiPo in. And I happen to have one here, which is rather handy, which hopefully has got some charge in it. 70%, cells are all good. We should be good to go. So out with that. Now, if I was using this permanently, I would go and buy a LiPo for it and just pull it in here. Now I know I can charge through it. So let's plug her in. Nothing crackled, always good. I'm gonna leave that bit of foam on there. Now it does say, and it says this in as well, make sure this antenna is in place before you turn it on and before you plug the battery in. Don't know exactly why that is, They've said it twice, so I have done that. And there we go, we're on. So let's power up together. The exciting bit. Oh, and by the way, I did notice in the box, where's it gone? It does come with a screen protector which is a nice little touch as well. So I only mentioned this the other day on my other reviews. 
that you can buy screen protectors for transmitters now, like you can for your mobile phone. And this actually ships with it. So well done Radio Master for that. Okay, the power up, let's do it. Because this is what it's about for me. It's about, do I like the transmitter? As in, how does it actually physically look, feel? Could I fly with it? Can I reach all the switches without any issue? And what is the software like? Those are the main two components that I think about when changing my transmitter. Let's check out the software. Welcome to HTX. Switch warning. Nice. Hold on, switch warning. What switch? SA should be up. Oh, that's nice. So it's telling me my switch is in the wrong place, even though it's the first time I turned it on. And as I get them in the right place, it continues to start up. Now, I like that little feature. Now, I don't know how it's worked out where the switches should be. I guess it's just the default model or default setup that's on here. And you know the switch should be in certain positions, so it's just warn me on start up, they're not the right position. And the fact that you can just flick them and it tells you easily on the screen which ones are wrong. I like that. That was super, super clear. And it has voice. I like that as well. But let's have a look at the software. Let me get on the bench so you can see this better. Okay, so here we go. Hope you guys can see that clearer now. So we're talking about the software, aren't we? So you would notice when I turned it on, I had to press and hold the switch and I will just double check the quick start guide. It doesn't actually mention anything about the on off switch. Yes, that is right. So press and hold. Let it go. Yeah, single press doesn't do anything. You have to wait for those lights. Yeah, so press, hold. Let go. Okay, that's fair enough. So there's no risk of knocking that switch while you're using the transmitter, which I think is a good thing. What have we got on the screen then? So we've got the position of the switches, SA, SB, SC. And you can see that change, SA has just changed there. Okay, so if it's a three-way switch like SB is, you've got a minus sign, or you get the arrow. And there are the dials, so on the, there you can just see. So I move the dial, you can see the position of the dial. So on and so forth for the other side as well. Oh, what about the rear switch? Oh, that's toggling over here, SE. And this one, which is like spring-loaded, SF, and then the trims. Minimum trim reached. Okay, a couple of things I like there. I like the sound decreasing. It's a nice audio aid, and I like the fact minimum trim reached. it tells you that the minimum trim has been reached. It's a small thing, but audio aids really do help when you can't take your eyes off the model and look down at the transmitter. Trim center. Trim center as well. Okay, liking that. And then, okay, so on the, in the square box here, you can see where the stick is. That's obviously my throttle on the left, and that'll be my rudder. On the right hand side, my ailerons elevator as well. And you might say, well, that's not needed, but I guess it's just a visual indication of what's going on there. And then we have the 7.8 volts on the LiPo. So let's press one of these buttons, system. And there we go, there is the menu. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit more to that menu for you. Okay, so there's the menu. So in tools menu at the moment, so I've just pressed system. We're on page one of seven. Now look, I'm gonna state the obvious here, this is a lower quality screen than what you'd get on a much higher end transmitter. That's gonna reflect on the price point, but is it usable? And we're gonna find out more when we go actually set up a model next time round. But for now, for this video, let's just have a little look through there. Now the obvious thing that I've just noticed on here is there's games. Game Asteroids, Games Breakout, Games Pong, Game similar to Game Snake. Is that really something we need on our transmitters? Or is that trying to appeal to a different generation? Guys, please put your thoughts down below in the comments section of this video as to why you think this may be and whether you think it's necessary. 
So I'm, I'm literally now trying to play asteroids on. I've no idea how this works. I'm not sure that's. Uh, I'm not sure that's. Oh, of course, you play on the sticks. I was going to say, I don't think that's needed. And here I am actually playing Pong. Right, now let's go back to the software. Guys, if you have one of these and you do use this feature, how do I get out of this? Oh, there are buttons as well. All right, so hold return down to get back out that. Um, I want to have a look at the setup. So let's go past games. TBS. Agent Light, Wizard Loader, not sure what that is. What, does, what do these buttons do? Guys, let's press the page button. There we go, it's a page. Look, I appreciate I've not read the manual. I'm trying to work this out for the first time with you guys, just to give, so you can have a look at what the software's like at this point. So we've got SD card, we've got backup, we've got logs, firmware, models, radio, screenshots, scripts, I think I've got a lot to learn. Sounds, English, how do I execute that? No idea, okay. So look, it looks like there's a sound section there which I am intrigued about because if you can assign sounds or your own sounds, custom sounds to switches, I'll find that really useful. Let's try and go through to a different menu. All right, it's page two, page three. Date, time, we'll change that later. Battery range, sound, key volumes, standard stuff there. Let's go to the second menu. Global functions, not sure on that. Trainer, mode, or slave. Sticks, calibration. Firmware options, modules, receiver version, and that's it. Let's come out of this menu. Go into model. Okay, so here's model selects. Boxer, FPV drone, Delta, Heli, and other models there. Has it got a limit? Doesn't look like it, that's good to see. Okay, let's go back a minute. So Boxer, so now if I press page on Boxer, model name, timer, condition silent, timer two. Okay, so it's different. Look, I think we've seen enough of the software. Keep on and press these. I'm not sure what they do at the moment. I've then just change color. Right, let me give you some thoughts on what we've just looked at. So here are my final thoughts on the Radio Master Boxer. So first impressions, I wasn't too sure, and that's because of the color, and that might just be a me thing, so please let me know down below in the description. I really like the gimbals. I do like the gimbals. I like the design around the gimbals as well. Uh, it'd be interesting to go and fly with these, which we'll be doing next time round. Software, I'm new to OpenTX. I don't know anything about it right now. I'm going to be learning, so I can share that with you guys. Uh, it looks like it's got everything on there I need to set up a model, which I'll find out next time around. I'm intrigued as to why games are included, but I will just admit I did spend five minutes playing some of the games on here. But why are they included? It's different. Is it trying to appeal to a different generation, younger generation? I don't know. So please, again, put something in the comments down below. I like the weight of it. I like the feel of it. You know, it's okay. Gimbals are particularly nice. Not impressed it doesn't come with a battery, but then many transmitters in this range don't come with batteries, so I guess that's fair enough as well. So if you guys want a chance to win this very transmitter, I'm gonna raffle this off like I've done with other equipment that I've reviewed. I'm gonna raffle it off in a few weeks time. I will put the links to that raffle down below in this description, so it will be in there when it goes live. I'll set the raffle for a few weeks and it'll just be a pound a ticket to enter and someone will win it regardless of how many tickets get sold. And that could be you. So next time around, I'm actually gonna set this up on a plane. I'm gonna find a receiver, put it on a plane, 
work out if we can set the model up, how we set the model up, and then we're gonna go and send it and see what happens, so test it out. If there's anything you guys want to know in particular about this transmitter, then please put a question down below and I'll do my best to answer that in the next video or on my Facebook page as well. So make sure you follow along there. Guys, thanks a lot. I'll see you next time around. I'm off to play Asteroids.